Good morning, and welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is Wednesday, July 13th. Mass intentions are for <clears throat> Baby Westman. Today we celebrate St. Henry. After, after he was anointed king, he was sat not satisfied with the anxieties of his realm. In order to attain the crown of immortality, he determined to campaign for the king of all. For to serve him is to rule. These words are found in an ancient life of St. Henry. Duke of Bavaria and later Holy Roman Emperor, Henry was a man of unusual strengths of character, a capable military leader, and an intelligent statesman. He was also pious and energetic in his work for church reform, especially in liturgical worship and in promoting missionary activity. His interest in the church was shared by his wife, St. Kuningunda, who became a Benedict nun after Henry's death in 1024. Henry's piety and asceticism are indicated in a letter from which we read today in the Office of Readings. We are taught and advised to abandon temporal riches, to lay aside earthly goods, and to strive to reach the eternal and everlasting dwelling places in heaven. For present glory in fleeting, and the meaningless while it is possessed, unless it can, we can glimpse something of heaven's eternity. Pope John XXIII told us in the political uh, uh, Pacum in Terrace that we all have a duty to take an active part in public life, and to contribute toward the attainment of the co uh, common good of the entire human family. Saint Henry abided by his teachings in his life and work. He was a responsible political figure. Pope John the Twenty-Third continued, Every believer in this world of ours must be a spark of light, a center of love, a vivifying leaven amidst his fellow men. And he will be all this and more perfectly. The more closely he lives in communion with God, in the, uh, in, with God in the intimacy of his own soul. The entrance antiphon is on page 856. Be one with him and one another. Let us pause for a moment to reflect the times of our lives when our words and our deeds have not brought each together. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to come to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your death and resurrection, you brought us new life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, whose abundant grace prepared St. Henry to be raised by you in a wonderful way, from the cares of earthly roll to heavenly realms, grant, we pray, through his interception that amid the uncertainties of this world, we may hasten toward you with minds made pure, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Woe to Assyria, my rod in anger, my staff in wrath. Against an impious nation I send him, and against a people under my wrath I order him to seize plunder and carry off loot, and tread them down like the mud of the streets. But this is not what he intends nor does he have this in mind. Rather, it is in his heart to destroy, to make an end of nations, not a few. For he says, by my own power I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am true. I have moved the boundaries of my people, their treasures I have pillaged, and like a giant I have put down the enthroned. My hand has seized like a nest, the riches of nations. As one takes eggs left alone, so I took in all the earth. No one fluttered a wing, or opened a mouth, or chirped. Will the axe boast against him who hews with it? Will the saw exalt himself, itself above him who wields it? As if a rod could sway him to who lifts it, or a staff him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord of hosts will send among his fat ones leanness, and instead of his glory there will be kindling, like the kindling of fire. The word of the Lord. Thank you, be God. Responsorial Psalm The Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord, the Lord will, will not, not abandon, abandon his, his people. people. Your people, O Lord, they trample down. Your inheritance they afflict. Widow and stranger they slay, and the fatherless they murder. The, the Lord, Lord will not abandon his people. And they say, the Lord sees not. The God of Jacob perceives not. Understand you senseless ones among the people. And you fools, when you will, you will be wise. The Lord will not, not abandon, abandon his, his people. Shall he who shaped the ear not hear, or he who formed the eye not see? Shall he who instructs nations not chastise, who he who teaches him, men knowledge? The, the Lord, Lord will not abandon his people. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. But judgment shall again be with the justice, and all the upright of heart shall follow it. The, the Lord, Lord will not, not abandon his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, 
And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm always amazed at the technological wonders for the first plane that, that can only travel a few hundred feet to the amazing plane that can fly today from one end, the farthest end of the world, to another, from Australia to London in roughly 20 hours. It's amazing, you know, non-stop, it can carry hundreds of people on the plane. Or the amazing computer in the past that was for a simple computer that has to be used with vacuum tubes and large, large buildings to now computer being carried in the palm of our hands on our phones that does amazing things and the technological medicine that used to that makes smallpox illness polios that are, are in the past. But I'm also sometimes puzzled, you know, with all these amazing technological wonders that we can fix a lot of problems. But there are many things I don't understand that we can't fix. A broken marriage, the hatred of the human heart, a prejudice, discrimination, the injustice of life, huge amount of poverty and crime. I mean, I don't know, it's just amazing that we can fix a lot of things, but the hardest thing we can't fix is the human heart, a broken heart, a heart that is broken, how do you fix that if any, any technology? And it's amazing, you know, for me, it's like the incredible what the human mind has done, but yet we can't come up with a solution. And today we hear today's gospel about what God has revealed to us, but we can't seem to fix ourselves. It's the amazing things that He revealed to the childlike His love and His mercy, the emptiness that's part and the loss that's within ourselves that God give us this special knowledge. Only if we're willing to be open to Him and open to learn and be amazed by His wonders. Yesterday it was amazing for me to discover that, you know, a fetus at five and a half to six weeks already has a beating heart. And you know, I don't know about you, but I'm always humbled by the human, by the human heart that starts beating rhythmically, it has to be without error. I mean, it has to be one instrument that's, that's got to be flawless to, to, to keep life functioning, to keep that baby growing in a woman's womb. It's always amazing for me that, that it starts beating for such a short, I mean, it's just a short amount of time, six weeks, that's not very long, to start forming and, and, and start beating. And you know, it's amazing that God put with this life within us. But yet I wonder who will often realize it. What, it what, what, what great wonder that God gives within us. Oh, sometimes are we jaded and not able to see the gift of life, the gift of beauty that God has given us. And I wonder sometimes do we appreciate that? Because I, I kind of wonder all about all that when I, when I see, it seems like we're, humanity is always in a state of war. If there's no war, no trouble, we seem to bring it upon ourselves to make our life miserable with each other. It seems like always the human heart seems to be always disturbed and troubled. And in the midst of all this, how does a human heart find peace? How do we find peace in our life? In the midst of a troubled world, how does a person find peace? God. Yeah, turn to God. Is it enough to say we turn to God? Concretely, what does it take to turn to God? Trust and faith. Yeah, trust and faith and actually make, make time for Him. Because how do you have faith and trust in someone you never spend time with? How do you? Unless you're honest to the person and honest to yourself and opening up the Lord 
you will feel the Lord's love and mystery in your life. You know, to be open to the Lord is to be open to humility. I'm always amazed when people go through a conversion process. Oftentimes, they have to be suffering a lot to realize that what God has done for you. They have to be reach the lowest point of their life. They, they, all their pride and all their ego and stroke gets pulled away that they can't realize, you know, they realize that I have nowhere to go except, <laughs> except up now and I'm so low down my life now. I have to turn to you, Lord, because I can't get out of this trouble in my life except I turn to you. And it's amazing in life when we turn to the Lord, the Lord can do amazing things. And sometimes, you know, I'm always amazed because, the, you know, in life, there are certain things that I almost, I think, that you can't get out of, that, you know, when you, to find reason for living, when you find yourself losing someone you love, when your marriage is over, when you lost a child, or, or, or certain tragedies in life, you know, when you lose your mobility, when you, when you have cancer or terminal illness, how does one keep going? Except there's, the only thing one has is hope. Hope that there's a Lord, that the Lord is going to help you and give you strength when you can't get out of bed yourself, when the, when the body is your own, seems like your own enemy, that your mind fails on you. And for me, it's humbling, you know, because it affects any one of us. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to open your minds and your hearts to the Lord, to turn to the Lord. And I think that's what makes the saints, saints. It doesn't mean that their life is perfect. It means that you keep turning to the Lord in their hour of need. And the Lord gave them the peace and the joy in the midst of their afflictions. And so today, I just invite you to join the saints. To open your minds and your hearts to the Lord. That indeed the Lord may help you and give you the grace and strength. To bear all difficulties in your life. That in the midst of difficulties and joy and, and struggles, you see the Lord in your midst and give you the strength to bear your cross and to care, bear it gracefully with the help of the Lord. In God's love and mercy, let us turn to him now upon our needs and all the needs of the, the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons. May God's grace be upon them to help to lead and guide their people to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each and every one of us, may we open our minds and hearts to the wonders and the love and God, love and the mercy of God that in doing so may we be reverent in turning to him in humility, and his wonder, his love, and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all the prayers that concern the words of my deep in the heart, especially the times of life we feel overwhelmed and so helpless that we know that we know the Lord is, is coming to our aid. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all those sick and ill in our community, for their speedy recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, trusting and believing God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving, compassionate Father, accept the prayers of your family gathered here. Help each and every one of us, Lord, to turn to you, that in doing so, may we experience your love and your mercy. We ask this to Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Let us be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dearly beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of blessed Henry, bestow your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful and strife ever new. And now for a sure sign of your love, that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Way when supper was ended, he took the challenge of once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to have held us worthy to be in your to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her into the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and behold heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin by the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with anyway, your spirit. Let us offer each other side of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we receive, O Lord, in commemoration of Blessed Henry, sanctify our minds and hearts that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be sure to join us at the Mass Day for Bible study. The Lord tells us where two or three are gathered. I am there in their midst. So we have a great opportunity to share the Word of God with each other and be witness for each other by our word and our deeds. So we share each other's life in the Bible study. So do join us after Mass today. And don't forget, each Friday, we have adoration and benediction after Mass. We'll come and spend time with the Lord in the silence of the Lord. In our heart, the Lord speaks to us. And remember, we, uh, I just invite you to celebrate your wedding anniversary together. This past week, we celebrate Oscar and Terry's their 25th wedding anniversary. How's it for you and your wedding and your family celebrating together this time? Oh, they enjoyed themselves, everybody. They were finally there to see us say our vows together. <laughs> yes, that was, yes, they were born 25 years ago when you said, said their vows. So they got, they got to be there like you said, Father. Yes. Did I notice that uh, your husband, Oscar, was his eyes in tears? It looked like it was a little wet on the, the yes, vows. Yeah. So I, I felt it too. <laughs> yeah. Did you have tears too? Yes, it, it was very wonderful for us. <laughs> it's unusual to see a bad cry, but you know. <laughs> but it just tells you how much touching it is to say the sacred words that you said 25 years ago. So I just invite you, if you have a coming wedding anniversary, let us know so we're going to rejoice together. So if you need, if you want to, you feel. Welcome to do your 50 year anniversary or 25 year vows together. A great way to renew God's love and mercy. And keep in mind, pray for uh, Aggie next month. She'll be celebrating her 50, the big 5 0 with her and her husband together. So keep her in your prayer next month in August. I'm sure it'll be an exciting time for her and her family. So if you have an upcoming wedding anniversary, send us a picture of your wedding, recent picture of you and your family together. And a poignant memory that day. And don't forget, if you have a birthday coming up, let us know so we can rejoice with you together. Send us a picture of when you were young, and a recent picture, and a poignant memory. Well, something that may reveal something that most people do not know about you, so we can rejoice together with you. So keep that in mind. And of course, there's always there's always a need for guest calmness. Share your story, what God has done for you. So, which means. I expect a story from you, Edie, and I mean not Edie, Oscar and uh, Terry, about <laughs> what does it feel like to celebrate your 25th now? That's a momentous milestone in your life. Yeah. And you're young enough, I think, to, I guess, to make it to 50. I can expect to see that I'm coming. Hoping. Yes. I don't know if you're around by that time, but that's a different story. Uh, I'll try to be there as much as I can, just like my husband. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it's good to share your story about that. Share what God has done. What does that mean, experience now that you reach? I guess middle age, uh, <laughs> of middle age and 25, five years together. What does it mean now looking at your children? And I have to tell you this morning, was I was kind of tense of awe when I saw your face reading. Because when I see your face this morning, I know your daughter, the resemblance that your daughter has with you. And I'm always amazed and awe when, when I see mothers and daughters, you know, the resemblance, like, wow, made in the image of each other, you know, a God in all this. It's kind of all inspiring. I don't know about you, but I'm always like, whoo, that's kind of exciting. Sometimes it takes a while to see that, but for me, it's exciting when I see that. The beautiful relationship that God has given us in our life, the beautiful gift of life. That's always something worth celebrating. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruined souls.